Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to the Eagles Report, and today let's take a look at a couple of free agent pass rushers, defensive ends, and defensive tackles the Eagles could go ahead and sign in free agency. Before we go, you guys think the Eagles should sign a pass rusher in free agency? Give me a thumbs up if you think so. And also, we are so close to 5,000 subs, which is crazy. We're the fastest and best Eagles channel here on YouTube, the fastest growing Eagles channel, I should say, on YouTube. So subscribe down below for more great content in the next couple of days and weeks. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start talking about defensive ends by saying it is not by any means the number one priority for the Eagles this offseason. They need corner help and they need wide receivers and we know all of this. But at the same time, with almost $50 million currently in free cap space, that's before they make some additional offseason moves, they have plenty of space to go ahead and tinker and maybe get a couple of guys in free agency and one could be a pass rusher. We love Derek Barnett. We love Fletcher Cox. We love the fact that Malik Jackson comes back. We love Brandon Graham. We can never have enough pass rushers. If there's a chance to go out and sign another one, I think the Eagles should go ahead and do it. So number one on the list, and number one on everybody's list, is going to be a pass rusher, Jadeveon Clowney, who's going to be a free agent from the Seattle Seahawks. He said he does not want to be franchise tagged, so most likely he will hit the open market. Now, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, off seasons ago, the Eagles wanted to go ahead and try and get Genevieve Clowney, but he eventually ended up with the Seattle Seahawks. The trade deadline didn't make a lot of sense for Philadelphia at the time. Maybe they rectify that by going ahead and signing him. The deal is not going to be cheap. North of $20 million a year is what he's going to be requesting, according to multiple uh, sources. He'd be an elite pass rusher. He'd make the Eagles instantly better. Maybe the best defensive line in football if you signed him. The problem is he hates Philadelphia. I mean, literally, he has quoted and said, Philadelphia has the worst fans ever, and he injured Carson Wentz in the playoffs. Do we really want him overall? He would be incredible. I would be willing to forgive him, but at the same time, this is a guy who's going to cost a lot and doesn't really like Philadelphia and might get better offers some other place. So I wouldn't count Jadavion Clowney as a very likely candidate, but he's a guy, if you could somehow get him, good Lord have mercy, would the Eagles be insane in terms of roughing the passer. Imagine having Brandon Graham as a rotational D-line guy. Like They could go for a NASCAR lineup where they go fast and go Barnett, Clowney, Graham, and Cox. That would be the best pass rushing uh, foursome in the NFL in a very, very long time. Number two on this list. Shaquille Barrett, Shaq Barrett from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who apparently wants to stay in Tampa Bay, and they might franchise tag him, but if he hits the open market, this is a guy you would have to throw a lot of money at. He could be great. 19 and a half sacks during the past couple of years. 19 and a half sacks last season. That's more than he had combined in his entire five season in Denver. It's going to cost 16 to $17 million a year to go ahead and sign him, but he would be an incredible pass rusher for Philadelphia going forward in the future. So the first two, Clowney, Barrett, not very likely. Let's go to some names that would make a lot of sense for the Philadelphia Eagles because I'm going to be shocked if Shaquille Barrett is not a, they doesn't end up staying with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How about a guy like Eric Armstead of the, C, uh, sorry, the San Francisco 49ers? Now, he plays more D-tackle. He can play D-end. They move him around on that pass rushing line. 11 and a half sacks on a year where they had D4, they had Nick Bosa, they have uh, DeForest Buckner, they have a lot of pass rushing talent on that team. Armstead is most likely going to be available in free agency. They could tag him in San Francisco. Reports say they might, but he might be available as well. He'd be a lot cheaper and make a lot of sense for Philadelphia as they try and go ahead and just add players here on the defensive line. Another name to throw out there is Indomitian Sue, who of course has been all around the National Football League and didn't do a lot last year aging a little bit, but if you want to just get some more rotational pass rushing bodies in there, like you did with Haloti Nada a couple of years ago, and Dominican Sue could be an option for Philadelphia as well. Moving on, Robert Quinn, Dallas Cowboys. Listen, very interesting point in his career as a free agent. He's a starting cal caliber player, but at 30 years old, this is not exactly a guy you want to just make your starting defensive end overall. I know he's a Dallas Cowboy. I know he's had some problems in terms of uh, coming off the edge, but he could be a lot cheaper. And for a pure defensive end, looking at my notes here, again, I watch, I'm not a big, big fan of Robert Quinn, but could make sense for Philadelphia as well. So our list so far, Jadavion Clowney, Shaq Barrett, obviously Eric Armstead, and we'll throw in Robert Quinn right there. That leaves us with a couple more to make this list. The final one is Vic Beasley, the free agent pass rusher from the Atlanta Falcons. So Vic Beasley, was great in 2016. The Super Bowl run, Vic Beasley, 15 sacks. He was incredible. It was like, oh my gosh, they signed him to an extension. He's going to be here forever. 
He is garbage. Like, Vic Beasley's been terrible the last couple of years. This past year in Atlanta, he had, like, two sacks until he got to week six, then rattled off a couple there and finished with eight and a half. They're paying him $12.5 million, and Falcon fans were like, enough. We don't want him. Don't re-sign him. No more player options. Get him off the team. So the Falcons came out and said, hey, listen, we're not going to re-sign him. No worries. We're going to let him go. He's going to be a free agent. Now, he's aging. Hadn't been that good. But that means you can get him for cheap. Like, less than $10 million. And if you want a rotational guy in there, he's a guy you can go ahead and make a move at. All these things with Philadelphia. You talk about Jadavion Clowney and Robert Quinn, or Jadavion Clowney and Shaq Barrett. Would they be nice on Philadelphia? Yes. But do the Eagles need to go out and get a superstar pass rusher in free agency? Our honest answer is no. A rotational guy would make a lot of sense because you don't know what you're going to get from Josh Sweat going forward. And you don't know how much longer a guy like Brandon Graham could go ahead and be a, day, a starting caliber defensive end in this league. I love BG. He's the best defensive end we've had in Philadelphia in a very, very long time. He won at the Super Bowl with the strip sack of Tom Brady. But overall, how long can you trust to have him on your squad is going to be very interesting going forward. So you get a guy who assumes the Chris Long role. We talked about this. Chris Long was a rotational aging pass rusher who played, you know, less than 50% of the snaps every single game, but was fresh and made some big plays night in and night out for Philadelphia. NFC title game. If it's not for his arm hitting Case Keenum, Patrick Robinson doesn't have the pick six and the Eagles comeback might not have ever happened. You need to get a guy to fill the Chris Long role and a couple of these guys on this list make a lot of sense. An Eric Armstead, a Vic Beasley, a Robert Quinn. Not too expensive in terms of what you're going to have to cost on the open market, but could make sense from a rotational pass rushing standpoint because the Eagles at times last year really struggled overall rushing the passer. Like they had some really good games. They had some really bad games, and I think if you add one more in there, it could make a lot of sense. You get Malik Jackson back at D-tackle, so you have a scenario where you have, I mean, former All-Pros and former Pro Bowlers up and down the defensive line. The more pass rushing you have, the better your defense is going to be. Just ask San Francisco, who had the number one pass rush in the league this past year and went on to go all the way to the Super Bowl. You know, they just fell short later on in that game. But still, we're very, very good in terms of pass rush in that game overall. We've talked about it before. Defensive end is not your number one priority. Your number one priority this offseason is cornerback and wide receiver. I don't care what order it is. And I've said before, you get your cornerback in free agency, you get your wide receiver in the NFL draft, but at the same time, with $50 million of available cap space, maybe, just maybe, the Eagles go ahead and get a pass rusher as well. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below if we should get a pass rusher. Now, if you think we should, let me know which one you guys would like us to get. Let me know in the comment section down below because I'm very curious what you guys think in terms of which pass rusher from this list makes sense, if we even need a pass rusher. I read and interact with every single comment, so go ahead and comment down below. And finally here, on the Eagles report, just to kind of sum it all up together, Free agency starts March 15th, 16th. We said before, $50 million in cap space. Here's the honest truth. The Eagles are going to make moves. They're going to make a lot of moves. They're going to get some good players. And I think what we will see at the end of free agency and the end of the NFL draft is a very different looking Eagles team, but a lot better of an Eagles team overall. Yes, they're going to get a wide receiver. It just depends on if it's a free agent or if it's the draft. Yes, they're going to get cornerbacks. It just depends if they're going to re-sign Darby and Mills or they're going to go ahead and get someone like a Chris Harris Jr. or Byron Jones in free agency. They are going to make moves. They are going to be successful. It's a matter of sitting back, waiting, and figuring out what is going to happen. But I wanted to get you guys a list of some defensive end, defensive tackle names Philadelphia could go ahead and look at in the free agent market that could make a lot of sense for our Eagles. I would love clowning. I would love Shaq Barrett. I honestly wouldn't mind Quinn. I wouldn't mind a Kyle Van Noy. Like, there are a lot. I wouldn't mind Vic Beasley. Just go ahead and get one. Bring him on there. That way, pass rush is not a problem going forward, which I don't think it will overall because you do get a guy like Malik Jackson back, which is going to help out a ton. All right, before I let you go, if you have not subscribed to the Eagles Report yet, please subscribe down below, notification bell. We're very close to 5,000 subs. We're going to have 5,000 subs by next week for sure. We can bump that up a little bit. Make it go a little bit faster if you guys subscribe right now. Click the big red subscribe button down below. We would greatly appreciate that as we're growing the best Eagles channel here on YouTube. It is the best one, hands down. Check out all of our previous videos on the channel as well. All the time we have for our day, the Eagles Report. I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Did you like that video?
Thanks for watching, but why don't you click this video right here because we did it just a couple of days ago and guess what? It's about the Eagles too. Like that video? Why don't you subscribe right down here? That way you're notified whenever we release more videos here on the Eagles Report. It's the fastest growing Eagles channel here on YouTube. Video, subscribe, click them right now. Go ahead, click them.